Well, I've been looking through AliExpress again and I've found another 10 watches that look absolutely fantastic. And today I want to share them with you. Hello, you're watching James. My name's James, you're watching me, and I am talking about watches. And it's time to do another wish list video from AliExpress. I'm constantly looking at AliExpress because I'm constantly looking for new watches that are being released and coming across some watches that perhaps have been out for a while, but it's the first time that I've come across them. And today I wanna to share with you 10 of those watches. 10 of those watches I have put on my wish list. And like I do whenever I do one of these videos, please be aware, I've not had hands on with any of these watches. These are ones that are on my wish list that I'm considering buying myself. So I'm not so much recommending these ones to you, I'm just drawing your attention to them. But if you do end up wanting to buy one of these, I am gonna leave one of those affiliate links down below. Thank you so much if you choose to use them. But let's jump into this list of 10 awesome watches that I've come across recently in the last few weeks on AliExpress. The first one is this 40 millimeter sort of retro 70s sort of style San Martin Diver, which I think looks very, very cool. This kind of style sort of has been quite popular recently. And I think for 128 US dollar, obviously plus some shipping and taxes, I think it looks great. I think there's a couple of variations available. Yep, more of a sort of a vintage style loom versus a white loom. I probably prefer the white loom. That's them side by side, 40 millimeters as well. I do like how that crown sort of sits into the case. This sort of style tends to be a little bit flat on wrist though, however, so keep that in mind. But at this sort of 40 mil sort of diver style, I think it would be quite good. Let's have a couple of looked at some of the uh, specifications of this particular watch. Uh, case thickness is 14.4 millimeters. This is the SN0123-G, 200 meters of water resistance, AR coating, bead blasted case, which you could probably see in those photos there, and about 116 grams. That's interesting, I haven't seen about there before, but that's this one here. And I do like that it is a 40 millimeter watch. I think this one is a very nice looking watch. Let's have a look at a couple more quick pictures of it. Yeah, I, I think I'd be going for more of the black and white version because I think that looks particularly good. And check out this Pagani design for 112 US dollars. It is like a racing chronograph style. I think that looks really cool. Looking at the specifications of this particular one, it's 13.5 millimeters thick, 39 millimeter case diameter, has a Japanese VK63 movement, which is a quartz movement, but in this sort of style, I think that's perfectly fine at this sort of price. And there's a bunch of different colors available. And it's on a strap, L on a bracelet there. I tend to always grab on the bracelet, although the Pagani design bracelets aren't particularly good. But then saying that, I think on this actual leather strap, that looks quite cool as well. What a great looking watch for that sort of price and what sort of size it is as well. I think, yeah, that sort of uh, 39 millimeters, wow, that would be good. And I do really like the case shape of this one. And especially I do like those chronograph pushes. I, I'm not a huge chronograph person. I don't mind them, I think they're okay, but I like them when they have sort of pushes that look more like this, that feel a bit more integrated into the case. So this is the kind of chronograph that really grabs my attention. Now I've looked at one steel flyer before and here is another one, obviously looking a lot like a GS, but this one, only 149 US dollars. A couple of different variations. I think it's just a difference in some straps. Yeah, I think it's just differences in straps. I prefer that sort of brown looking one. Yep, I think that's a very cool looking watch. I like this style of watch anyway. I've even looked at the original, the GS, and I think it looks fantastic. That looks like a Seiko movement. Oh, NH34, yes, it's a Seiko NH34 movement. This is the SF791. Let's jump down and have a quaffle look at some of the specifications. As we know, GMT Seiko movement, 40 millimeter case diameter, Case, uh, case lugs are 19 millimeters, so that's exactly what the GS is. 73 grams, yep, that's not too bad at all. I think that is a very cool looking watch. There's a reason why I've been attracted to the original, this one, but as a bit of a homage and a more of an affordable homage, this one might be a worthwhile one to pick up. I've been rather excited about a few of the homages of this particular watch coming out recently. And yes, I know this is uh, not an original design, but at this sort of price, these sort of looks with that sort of movement, it gets me a little bit excited. Now I haven't looked at one from Addy's Dive for a while and this one I just think looks absolutely fantastic. Really good looking watch there, has a bit of loom there if you click on the loom and it's only 70 US dollars. This is the AD2038, 
Seiko NH35, 100 meters of water resistance, and I think it's just a very cool looking watch. And Eddie's Dives in general, they do some really decent, affordable watches. Um, and I think that looks nice. Look how good that is. That's just an easy watch to wear, I think. 100 meters of water resistance. Let's jump down to some of the specifications. Seiko movement. Do love Seiko movements in these sort of price range watches. Um, case length, so the lug to lug is 48. Case diameter, 39 millimeters. Yeah, that's a pretty good set of dimensions for a watch like this. Let's go back up and just have another quick look. Oh, I do like it. I think it's good. And it's got a mill clasp as well. And it's got that Eddie's Dive logo on the back. Solid end links, solid um, bracelet there. What a great looking watch for only 70 US dollars. Now, I haven't looked at a Caddison for a long time, but look, $59 for this awesome looking Caddison. Well, let's get back to that picture. This has a bit of a GS looking dial there with a blue second hand, which I think looks fantastic. And look, no weird markers. Now, Caddison, for me, occasionally has a, a few little weird markers. This one looks great on a bracelet as well. Um, four centimeters, so that's probably about a 40 mil, 4.7 wide. So we're looking at about a 40 mil case diameter with a 47 mil uh, lug to lug, which is a nice set of dimensions. Has that really interesting case back that they'd like to do, which is sort of a see-through case back that you can't see it. Butterfly clasp, what is that, sapphire crystal, a little bit of a loom on there as well. Seiko NH35 movement for $59 and 100 meters of water resistance. I think that actually might be a worthwhile watch to consider. And whilst we're looking at affordable dressy watches, check out this Starking for $48. You can get it in the white or in the black. And I think that's just a very neat looking three-hander be a nice dress watch to have in the collection. Automatic high beat movement, as it says, for $48. Going down a little bit to check out some of the specifications, it says it has AR coating, has this particular movement in there. It has a 40 millimeter case diameter, 20 millimeter bandwidth, because I'm assuming you probably want to swap the strap out of this one, and a 12.5 millimeter thickness, and 151 grams, which sounds like a lot for this watch, so I don't think that's quite true but I think it actually looks quite nice. Just not sure if I like the black or the white better. Now recently I had a look at another uh, homage watch that looked a lot like this GS as well, but this one is from Tandorio for $67. I always say Tandorio does some of the best watches for the money that I've ever come across. And I know a few people don't like the name of them, but I have no issues with the name of them. I actually quite like their little logo, but what I do like is how good quality they are for that price that they are. And look at all the different variations we've got there. This one has the NH35, so it's an automatic movement, 39 millimeters with a sapphire crystal for 67 US dollars. That's absolutely amazing. It's got this really cool dial going on, that nice blue hand, GMT automatic. There's a bracelet version of it as well. I think that is amazing. And all these different case or dial colors, are blue, black, white, yeah, I actually really, really am impressed by this one. And I've been impressed by every single Tandorio that I've ever had my hands on. I think they are really are some of the best quality watches for the money that I've ever come across. Now, recently I've been actually looking at the original of this watch. It's sort of caught my attention. I am a bit of a fan of the particular brand, but for this sort of price of 75 US dollar from Courgette with the Seiko NH35, well, that's sort of something that grabs my attention. This sort of bronze case, all these different dial colors or bezel insert colors, which you can sort of choose from. I think that's a great looking sort of option. Now you can go for a Seagull movement, a Miyota movement, or the Seiko movement. I'd go for the Seiko movement, making it $87. But I think it's a really nice looking watch. And checking out the size of it, this is a 41 millimeter watch, 12.5 millimeters thick with sapphire crystal and a bandwidth of 22 millimeters. I really like the design of this one. I like that sort of 369 on the dial. And I think it really suits this sort of uh, bronze looking case as well. It has grabbed my attention a couple of times. Now this is not a new one at all. In fact, I've actually looked at this Herodland quite a few times in the past. I've really considered buying it on a few times in the past, but every time I see it, it just grabs my attention again. And I just wanted to bring myself back to it because, well, recently I've just bought another watch that 
is a lot more expensive than this one, but looks a lot like this one. So I'm actually very interested to possibly buy this one myself to do a bit of a comparison. And this one, it's only $121. And it's because it's been out for a while, it's actually a little bit cheaper than it was when it was first released. This is the Roland F018. It does feature the Seagull ST17. If we go down to some of the specifications just to see the sort of size of it, you can see it is a 40 millimeter watch, 22 millimeter case diameter, sapphire crystal and what i can say is every time i've experienced a roland watch they have been incredible quality so i'm assuming this one would be incredible as too i think i might actually have to pick this one up this time after looking at it so often especially because i want to be sort of comparing it against a watch that i just bought and this Beijing watch company, I've just come across it recently. They have some really cool looking watches, a lot of different variations in styles and prices. But this dressy watch with these applied numerals, little date window tucked in there, sub second hand, and these sort of vintage style sort of looking hands with those vintage style lugs for 149 US dollars. It has grabbed my attention, especially since it's a 38 millimeter diameter watch, which I like, has a sapphire crystal, 30 meters of water resistance, and let's check out the back of it. It's got a see-through case back. We'll go down to the specifications of this one a little bit because, yeah, we can see it's mechanical movement, 30 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal, 38 millimeter. I think that's a very cool looking watch. I quite like these sort of vintage -y, dressy watches, but I don't really like spending the huge amount of money that some of these watches do sort of command. So buying something that's more affordable, just like this one, really does grab my attention. And I am probably gonna be buying a couple of these ones in the near future because they seem to be getting better and better watches from AliExpress. And some of the ones I've shown you on the list today are probably some of the best that I have come across. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate everybody who watches my videos. And if you decide to use one of those affiliate links that I leave below, thank you so much because it really does make a big difference to me and the channel as well. And guys, whilst you're watching these videos, maybe check out a couple of my others.